Hi everyone, welcome to the Laguna Beach Living Podcast. Today I'm here with Mary McDonald. She's the owner of Double M Pottery, which is a beautiful ceramics line here in town. And she is the mother of two boys. Did I make that up? No, okay. two boys. I mean, I think we talked about that. <laughs> yeah, Max and Dylan McDonald, who both went to Laguna Beach High School. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. It's so wonderful to finally meet you in person. Yeah, I know. So I've seen your pottery around town at Laguna Supply, and we're so excited to now have it at Kitchen in the Canyon. And it's so funny because I one day I went to um, the beach at Emerald Bay right before I gave birth, actually, to my son, and we parked right by your house. And I just walked out and your garage was open. And all of a sudden I saw all this beautiful, all these beautiful ceramic pieces. Oops. And I was like, what's going on? And <laughs> I, I may have seen you then, or maybe my husband popped in and said something, but then I, I think that's when I found out it was at Laguna Supply. And I just, you know, fell in love with your work from there. And then when we did the feature on you, like I was just saying on Laguna Beach Living, I found out that you had um, two boys that went to Laguna Beach High School. And so, yeah, I was just interested in hearing more about you and your story and learning about when you got into ceramics. Yeah, so I, I about eight years ago, you know, the nest was empty mm -hmm. and um, I wanted to try something different. I'd always worked with uh, fabric and needlework. So I did needlepoint and I sewed and I knitted and all that. And I wanted to try something completely different uh, than anything I had done. So I took two semesters of ceramics at Saddleback College. Oh, wonderful. Um, and it didn't come to me easily. Mm -hmm. I went in on, during open studio time and kind of put in a lot of time to try to catch up with the other students in the class <laughs> that seemed to catch on a lot easier. Yeah. And then when that was over, I started going to Irvine Fine Art Center because I needed a place that had a wheel mm -hmm. and just put my 10,000 hours in, in about two years, just loved playing with clay, loved learning about it, couldn't stop looking at it online, watching YouTube videos of people throwing, reading books, um, just kind of became obsessed and very passionate about wow. clay. That's so, that's so amazing. I mean, to have so I've taken a ceramics class, not at the high school, but just at the sawdust one day. And I was terrible at it and I have no eye and no, I mean, I have this vision of what I want and I've seen things all over Pinterest and Instagram and whatever, but to be able to create that, that's a whole nother thing. So that's so awesome that you just went in and went, you went all in and you were, you created a company out of it. Which was accidental. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. So, okay. What were you doing with all the pieces that you were making while oh. you were... Uh, you know, a lot of friends got things for Christmas and birthdays and my tables got decorated with them. I'd like <laughs> to take everything back now because my mugs were like doorstops in the beginning. Yeah, I won't. <laughs> um, so about four years into doing it, uh, Molly Wood is a friend of mine. She's a landscape designer and has a shop in Costa Mesa. I had posted something on Facebook and she had reached out and said, I want to carry some of this uh, in my shop. And I was like, oh gosh, no, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I'm not ready. And then a year, the year went by and I think I was ready. And so I contacted her and filled up the back of my car with some of what I had and had no idea what to price it at and um, what was a small, what was a medium, what was a large. Uh, but we worked it out. She was very supportive and helpful. And she sort of helped me launch the very notion of selling these. And from there, um, you know, got on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Well, before I, to back up for that story. So Molly, I was selling stuff at her, at her shop and then she placed another order. And I honestly thought my <laughs> husband was going behind my back and buying this Aww. to encourage me. I just yeah. couldn't believe that a stranger, someone that didn't know me was looking at something I made and saying, I want to put that in my house. Yeah. Um, I thought everybody that had it in their house was felt sort of obligated because <laughs> they knew me. Yeah. Um, but a gal that did photography, Trina, who's, uh, lo was local in Laguna had called me and said, I collect ceramics and I want to come over. I've been buying your stuff from Molly and I still actually have her voicemail on my phone because I almost Aww. cried. I said, you're kidding me. I thought my husband was buying this. Yeah. I didn't realize that this was really a thing. And um, anyway, it just kind of grew from there, just Instagramming and 
What a sweet thought, Mm -hmm. first thought to think that it's your husband who's buying it to encourage you, which is so wonderful. But that's, that is a really incredible feeling to know that other people appreciate your work because it's so intimate, Mm -hmm. such an intimate thing, I think. And then also to get on Instagram. So it was four years ago when you started selling them? I would say about four years ago. And that's kind of, I mean, Instagram, when was that then? Like 2015? And Instagram was around, but still somewhat new. Yeah. So did you just learn on your own or did you ask or how did you get on Instagram? Well, okay. So I learned that on my own. To be honest with you, probably the first two years that I sold, I wasn't very savvy about Instagram. So mostly spread word of mouth. Mm -hmm. For instance, Dana from Laguna Supply, I was in there shopping as I am often. Yeah. (laughs) And she said, you do pottery, don't you? And so she kind of approached me. And so I got into Laguna Supply and then... um, As time has gone on, I've just had to learn a lot about Instagram by using it. And um, I like the Mm cross-marketing value of it. I love the fact that I can promote the stores I'm in and they can promote me and that people are very generous with each other, tagging each other. And Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, Instagram has been very instrumental for me. Yeah, it really has for a lot of people. And it's beautiful to... you. I think there's a love hate with Instagram, of course, because, and I say this a lot, you can get sucked into it. And on one hand, it can make people feel bad about themselves. But then on the other hand, if you really use it for creating a community and having a creative outlet where you share your work with others, it's just all good from there. And it's cool that you can like, go on and have your little news feed where it's all your friends that you've met through your work or whatever and support each other, like you were saying. Yeah, I follow a lot of other potters. Mm -hmm. So there's a great community of potters on Instagram. If I post something, someone might reach out to me and say, what kind of glaze is that? What kind of clay are you using? And vice versa. Mm -hmm. Um, I have found that people in the pottery community are very generous. Um, Don't feel threatened sharing with each other and that's been really nice. Uh, so, I'm also at another store in Laguna. I'm at the Garage Collective, oh, too. Oh, yeah. I yes. haven't. She moved spots, She moved I think, spots, yes. To a bigger space, right? Across from the surf and sand. Yeah, I yeah. need to check it out. That's so great. Yes. So not that much farther than where, from where she was. No, but a, a yeah. really nice space. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And where else? So uh, in Laguna, that's where I am. And then I'm, uh, I'm in Los Angeles. I'm at uh, three stores, uh, Jill Roberts. I'm at Potted in Atwater Village. Mm-hmm. I'm in Ojai in two stores, Fun. San Diego. And then I have my own retail space in Palm Springs. Oh, yeah, I saw that, actually. Yes. Do you yeah. spend a lot of time there? I do. We have a place there. That's and, nice. Yeah. So how long have you been in Laguna? About 30 years. Actually, 30 years. May 5th. This May 5th, it was 30 years. And what brought you to Laguna? And where are you from? Well, I'm originally from the Bronx. Uh, My family moved to Orange when I was a kid and grew up there. And then my husband and I, when we were first married, we lived on the Back Bay in Newport. Mm -hmm. And I was pregnant with my first son. And my neighbor was dating someone in Emerald Bay and said, you want to come to the beach with me today? And we went. I'd never been in there before. Mm -hmm. Uh, just couldn't believe how beautiful I've been yeah. coming to Laguna since I was very young, yeah. um, you know, as, t- as a teenager, but had never seen anything like that and came home and said to my husband, I just can't believe this place we were at today. It was just amazing. Mm-hmm. Max was born. And a few months later, uh, there was an ad in the wall street journal of all places for a house in, uh, Emerald Bay. Really? And, in yeah. the wall street journal? In the wall street journal, which is very strange. He was looking through the paper and he said, <laughs> Oh, isn't this that place you were telling me about, North Laguna? And I'm, yeah. So we went, and we ended up getting that house. Wow. Um, and when our, so when our oldest son was eight months old, we moved uh, into Emerald Bay. That's so fun. It's mm-hmm. such a wonderful community in there. Yes. I had a lot of friends growing up that lived in there, and it, it's just, it seems so safe and just such a great place to raise kids. It was nice. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice, especially for the kids their friends are like cousins to them. Yeah. You know, they've just known these kids. I mean, m- both of my sons, they're two years apart. There was just this gaggle of boys, just mm-hmm. uh, for whatever reason, there was a lot of boys during that period that were all within this three or four year age range. And I mean, you come downstairs in the morning and there would be, you know, some <laughs> kids there. sitting in your kitchen eating Fruit Loops wearing one of your kids' t-shirts. <laughs> You're like, oh, hi, Scotty. You know? <laughs> so um, 
So that's fun. That was really nice. Yeah, people felt like they could, and I'm sure all of Laguna is like that too, where yeah. people can just kind of flow in and out of each other's homes. The kids know each other. They know all the parents. It's been wonderful. So now what's it like being in MLB? I mean, are you spending a lot of your time throwing pottery? Yeah, so I have a studio. So uh, about four years ago, I got a wheel. And then a few months after that, I got a kiln. And so I have a complete home studio now. And I live in a beautiful house by the beach, but I'm in my garage all the time. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> and it's, it's not a pretty garage. It's but just it's a garage. very organized. It's pretty organized. I mean, you, pottery is very messy. Yeah. So there's a lot of cleaning up. Um, yeah, but you have to constantly work at sort of just keeping it. Because, you know, you're basically working with mud. Yeah. And glazes are these very kind of powdered materials that become airborne. And so um, there's a lot of effort to keep it as you know, toned down and cleaned up as possible. Are you a perfectionist? Okay, so I used to be a perfectionist. <laughs> I was just thinking about this this morning. I used to be a perfectionist, and I've realized I used to make my bed the minute I woke up yeah. every morning, and I've realized in the last couple years, I don't make my bed anymore. Really? I, I just love don't. That. <laughs> no, but it's just such an out-of-character yeah. thing for me, and I think that this uh, pottery life that I'm living, this kind of artistic uh, life I'm living has allowed me to let go of a lot of things that I thought needed to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, That's so special. It's almost like its own meditation. So like a feel good meditation. So you let go of control in other areas. Yeah. Probably because I'm super busy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'm very, very, I'm very busy with it, but also I think What's been nice about it is just letting go of judgment. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when you first start making things or paint, I don't paint, but if you were to do that, I imagine at first you don't want anybody to see what you're doing. Yeah. And there was just a point where I realized I don't really care what anybody thinks. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just going to make it and there's going to be somebody out there that likes it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and oh my gosh, we all love it. It's oh, so you. beautiful. And the reason I asked if you're a perfectionist is because they are perfect. I oh, feel like sweet. all the pieces are, I mean, it. It's like a machine could have made it, but obviously yeah. not in the sense of like the aesthetic or anything. And they're all, definitely one of a kind, but still, um, yeah, I just, I'm obsessed with them. Thank you. They're I think so people beautiful. are craving handmade things. Yeah. They don't want, I always say you can go to Target and for $9, you can buy the most perfect mug and mm -hmm. they have wonderful mugs there. Um, if that's what you want, mm -hmm. but some people want things that are special that you're not going to see everywhere. I can only make so many in my lifetime. So, yeah. you know, you're not going to see them forever and ever. And I think people are enjoying that more now. That's so awesome. So what's your favorite, what's the favorite or the best takeaway for you? Like you just said, no judgment, but what else have you learned through throwing? Is that what you well, would call yeah, it? Throw, yeah. yeah. So through, well, um, I've learned a lot of stuff. First of all, when I'm throwing, I listen to a lot of podcasts. And oh, cool. so I'm, it's like almost I'm reading books while I'm throwing. Mm -hmm. So I, I learned a lot of things while I'm throwing, but through throwing, um, well, like I said, I've, I've learned to give up judgment. I, there's certain parts of doing pottery that I really like. Uh, what's really nice about when you're throwing something that I've noticed is that you just don't ruminate about the things that you would typically ruminate about. Mm -hmm. You just are kind of in that moment, yeah. which I have a bit of a monkey brain, so mm -hmm. that's not always easy for me. Mm -hmm. And so that has been a really, I always say it's cheaper than therapy, my yeah. pottery, yeah. although I don't discount therapy. I had a great <laughs> therapist for a while, but anyway, so it's, um, it, you just don't ruminate about things. You're just kind of focused on the moment. The I do get a little harried sometimes because my business has really, really grown, I, I, um, which is great. I've learned about how to run a business. Um, these are things I never thought I'd be learning. Um, so I think the challenge for me right now is just trying to keep up with the demand. That's which a, is good a good challenge. Problem yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just so wonderful that you're able, I mean, this is something you've not only learned a new skill throwing mm -hmm. pottery but also learning about running your own business and building it up and and how easily it seems like it's come to you but also so much hard work goes into it and I mean it's a testament to knowing that you can start anything at, at any, any time. time in your life yeah. and yeah it's there's always room to learn and grow and that's beautiful yeah I'm 62 I've raised two children. You do not look oh, you're very 62. sweet. You're gorgeous. Thank I you. mean, not that someone who's 62 <laughs> can't be gorgeous, yeah. but you 
look amazing. But you know, I'm at a stage in my life where it's been really nice to learn that you can start something completely, you can do something completely different. In fact, I only wish that I'd started it earlier mm -hmm. because uh, I could grow it more, but I don't see myself really doing that. You know, I, I, there's a point where I'm going to have to sort of say, this, this is, is my it. limit. Yeah. Um, but and you I haven't reached that. I'm sorry. Would you say you haven't reached that? No. Oh, I'm there. I'm yeah. almost there. I'm looking for someone to help me right now a little mm -hmm. uh, to be able to help throw with me. But um, is it just you? It's just me. I did have, I do have, she's leaving a girl from the high school who would come about once a week, once every two weeks for a few hours. And she would help me That's around fun. the studio. And I got her through the high school ceramics teacher. Oh, um, yeah. Darn and she was wonderful. Is Darnell still teaching there? Uh, no, her, oh. the teacher is Summer. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, Selvin, I think. Sel mm -hmm. Sel Selvin. And then a, a girl named Camille, who was a student of hers, who's really a great gal. Anyway, has been helping me a lot in the studio. That's but nice. But she's leaving. She's going off to college. Oh, <laughs> yeah. and so you might, you still look for someone else? Or? I have been looking actively. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually reaching out to uh, the junior colleges because I need someone who can really throw. And I think... Uh, in order to throw a proper cylinder the way I need it to be done, um, you really have to have thrown like 700 of them. Yeah. It's like golf. You have yeah. to swing a 700 times before you know you're going to hit that ball every time you swing. Mm -hmm. And that's what pottery is. Gosh, I, I wish I was good at that. It's so, it's so nice to be able to say, I made this. And I just don't think I could ever do that. Well, you have... You know, you're doing other things yeah. and you have a ch young child and I could never have done it when my children were younger because yeah. I, I was able to devote the time to it. And my husband works, he likes his work. And so I needed something to do. I always say it kept me out of South Coast Plaza. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's been uh, I love that. a good use of my time. Yeah. But how about now? Are you throwing pottery every day? Pretty much. I'm either throwing pottery or I'm trimming pottery or I'm wow. glazing pottery. For instance, before I came here, I, lo had a, I loaded the kiln and I checked on the kiln. I loaded the kiln this morning. I went to see a grandniece graduation. Then I came back and I checked on the kiln. And, you know, so I'm always, I'm going to go home after this. I'm going to trim. And then I'll probably throw a bunch of things tomorrow. Uh, I, yeah, I'll throw all weekend. That's yeah. incredible. And what about your friends? Do you have a lot of friends here in town? I do. I have a lot of friends uh, here in town. None of them are, well, I have a friend, friends that are potters, but my friends don't do what I'm doing. Yeah. I think <laughs> that, um, I mean, I wonder in your group of friends, if there are women that are wanting to find something because they've, they're empty nesters and they want the same thing. And maybe you've inspired them to go after whatever it is, or. I think some of them are, I think some of them have grandchildren, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure that if I, if, and when I have grandchildren, I'll probably taper this down. Yeah. I'd want to be involved with that. Um, some of them play golf, you know, they just have different interests. Um, but, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's common. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always been kind of a worker bee and I need to do work. Yeah. Whether it was with my children or even needle pointing. I needle pointed like a lunatic. I had pillows <laughs> everywhere, you know. Did uh, you sell those? No, 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 no. But <laughs> gifts again. Everybody I need got to see those. Oh, no. <laughs> um, try the flea market. I've given a lot of it away. But I mean, my friends would walk in and go, you need more pillows. <laughs> Joke. Um, but I think it just, it's, your, it's whatever your nature is. I'm a mm -hmm. worker bee. I'm pretty resourceful. So figuring out the Instagram and, yeah. and the QuickBooks and, you know, all the other things that I've had to kind of figure out uh, has been great for me. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, learning. That's <laughs> so fun. So what's next for Double M Pottery? Like any new uh, things that you're going to be bringing? I mean, you do pot, pots, right? Pots and mugs pots and bowls. Pots and mugs and bowls and pitchers and bells. Um, yeah, I love your bells. Thank you. Well, I'm so, I'm, that's the other thing is I'm kind of so busy mm -hmm. just fulfilling what I'm doing that I haven't been able to kind of pause and try new things. Like I don't throw very tall. Mm -hmm. It's a challenge for me. Um, a lot of women don't throw very tall. Some do, but to center up, I can center up to nine pounds of clay, but it's a very physical pottery is very physical. So to throw a bigger ball of clay and to make sure mm -hmm. I can get it super tall um, I'm looking for workshops or, you know, to take some lessons to kind of have somebody help me figure that out. Uh, I want to, for a house in Palm Springs, I want to make a totem. 
oh, for cute. the backyard, but I haven't had any time to really make anything. Wow. We drink out of all my seconds, all my sort of warped mugs. So yeah. if you came to my house and had a cup of tea or coffee, <laughs> You would sort of, you know, is this what you're serving out of? Because I just keep all the seconds, so we don't have the nicest pottery in my house. I'm sure it's still beautiful. Yeah, it's all right, yeah. but I can see all the flaws in it. So totem, what's that? like? So like a totem pole. No so I want to, Yeah, I want to get a big piece of rebar in our backyard, put it in the backyard, and then sort of make different things to kind of stack on top That's of each really other, cool. really colorful. And there's a corner of our yard that I see all the time, and I think that would be really pretty to have just a big stack of just wonky sort of pottery that's fun and that's kind of different than what you sell so mm -hmm. I'd be interested in seeing yeah. how that turns out and so if someone wants to buy your pottery where you mentioned they can in town Laguna Supply and um in town Laguna Garage Supply Collective. and Garage Collective but I have a website mm -hmm. double m pottery.com and that's spelled d-o-u a lot of people think it's m-m um and so I do sell online and then on there it also has all my stockist list uh, you know, where you can buy the pottery. And hopefully eventually Kitchen in the Canyon. And Kitchen in the Canyon. Yeah. yeah. So you have mugs. And then I know uh, the gal that manages there, she had mentioned they would like to maybe sell it. Yeah. It should be great. We love those. So I love the yellow dot too. It's just perfect. So perfect. It, you know, yeah. that's your logo. Yeah. yeah. It just worked out so well. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks so much for joining us today and sharing your story and just have, letting us learn more about you and what you're up to. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs>